Solving Linear Quadratic Systems When a linear function and a quadratic function meet, what happens is that there could be uh, different types of intersection points. For example, a line in a quadratic can meet at two points, i.e. this is also known as a secant line where that linear function is a secant line passing through the quadratic function. It can meet at one point, also known as a tangent line, which touches the parabola at one point. So passes through the parabola at one point. And then finally, there's a case where they never intersect, where a parabola and a line never meet. When we think about this, where they meet at 2, 1, or 0, where have you heard this before? That's right, via the discriminant. The discriminant can be used to determine which of the above situations occurs. Once we know that, we can use, if there is an intersection point, we can use the quadratic formula or factoring to find the x values. Now, moving forwards. To be able to do this, let's look at some examples. Example 1. Consider the parabola y equals negative 2x squared plus 12x plus k and the line y equals 8x minus 6. Determine the value k in each case. So, let's say the line intersects the parabola at two points. What can you tell me about the discriminant? That's right. If there are two intersection points, means that the discriminant must be greater than zero. So if I take both equations and set them equal to each other, we can find the intersection. That means that we move everything over, collect like terms, and we find out that our a value is 2, our b value is negative 4, and our c value is the remaining. The reason why k belongs in the c value has to do with the fact that k in this case doesn't have a, a variable x next to it. Because it doesn't, it doesn't belong to b. k doesn't have x squared next to it, so it is not a coefficient of x squared, so it's not doesn't belong to a. It belongs to the constant, so that's where we put it. It's not always the same, but in this case, this is what it is. Then what you do is you plug it into the formula b squared minus 4ac. One thing to note is that we know that the discriminant has to be greater than 0. So we set b squared minus 4ac greater than 0. Expand collect like terms. Now what's very important here folks is that we look for the variable and make sure that the variable is positive. The variable has to be positive so if it was negative we would move that to the other side. Because it's positive here we leave it here. If it's negative we move it to the other side. And we get 8k is greater than negative 64. k is greater than negative 8 y 64, 16 plus 48 is 64, move it over, becomes negative 64, divide both sides by 8, you get k is greater than negative 8. Alright, what happens if I ask for the situation b, where the line intersects a parabola at one point? What does that mean? Well, hopefully, you remember that the one point means that the discriminant equals 0. So, b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. We've already calculated what b squared minus 4ac is, folks. We did that earlier. So 8k plus 64 is equal to 0. That means k is equal to negative 8. So if the k value is negative 8, that's the only one case where we can ensure that the line and the parabola meet at one point when k is equal to negative 8. Part C. The line does not intersect the parabola, what does that mean? That's right. No point means the discriminant is less than zero. Set the discriminant less than zero 
and we find out that the k has to be less than negative 8. Okay. Okay, here we go. Example number 2. Determine algebraically the co coordinates of the points of intersection of y equals 2x squared plus 8x plus 6 and y equals 10x plus 18. So all we have to do is find the points of intersection. We do this by setting the two equations equal to each other, just like we did before, bringing everything to one side to make it equal zero. And then now, what we're going to do is we're going to factor. Common factor first, and once you common factor, you factor that internal trinomial, what two numbers multiply to give you negative six and add to give you negative one, that's negative three and negative two. Next, you're going to find the x values. x is equal to negative 2, that's this one right here, x is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to 3. So this here, folks, is the x-coordinates of the points of intersection. But we haven't found the y-coordinates, because we need both the x and the y-coordinate to be able to find the points. So. We're going to sub x equals negative 2 in equation number 2. Note I numbered the first one and the second one, and I'm going to plug it in the second one and find the value. That gives us a value of negative 2 for the y. Plug x equals 3 into the equation, and when we plug in 3, we get 48. So the point of intersection of our negative 2 and negative 2 negative 2, negative 2, and 3, 48. Those are the points of intersection. Very simple and straightforward. Let's look for another one. Example 3. You're asked to determine the equation of the tangent line with slope 3 to the parabola y equals 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. What does this tell us? about what we need. We need an equation of a line with slope 3. So that helps us that this is part of that line. And it intersects this parabola at how many points? That's right, one point. So the tangent line equation is going to be y equals 3x plus b, b being here just the y-intercept. And then we have one point of intersection, which means that the discriminant b squared minus 4ac, now note, these two b's are different. So we draw them differently to distinguish the differences between them. You could name this b a different letter if you choose instead. So b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0 because it's a tangent line meeting at one point. So we plug in, sorry, we set two, two equations equal to each other move everything to one side, identify the a, b, and c, plug it into the uh, discriminant, once we plug it into the discriminant, set the discriminant equal to zero, and solve for b. And you find out that b is equal to negative 13 over 12. So that means that this is the y-intercept, folks. This here is the y-intercept. So the equation is y equals 3x minus 13 over 12. All right. Let's try another one. Ready? But before we do that, I just want to go over one last topic that I did cover. Not always is the equation allowed to be in slope-intercept form. Sometimes you'll have to express it in standard form. Just to recap what standard form is, you take the entire slope-intercept equation, multiply by the common denominator, this being 12, and once you multiply by 12 right across, you move everything to one side, so that means this will move over here to the side where x is positive, and that turns out to be our standard form equation. All right, one more. Here's, here's an example taken from your textbook. All right, and basically you have two equations, and it says graph, graph both equations on the same set of axes. I'm going to be honest with you, we're not going to work on this. I want you to be able to calculate algebraically the coordinates of the point of intersection. How do we do that? Irregardless, 
irregardless of the drawing, so we're just going to, we don't have to worry about what the drawing says, we set the two equations. What do we have to do is calculate the coordinates. That means all we're going to do, folks, is now set the equations equal to each other. Set the equations equal to each other, move everything to one side, the side where x squared is positive is a great idea. Factor the expression. Get some x values, which are negative 2, sorry, negative 2 and 9. And then when you plug these values in, negative 2 really doesn't make any sense because that means we would have to go backwards on the platform, and that doesn't make any sense for us in this case. It's not possible to go negative 2 backwards and then negative 26 into the ground. So 918. This question would have, uh, we're missing some parts in the question. So basically the fireworks would intersect the hill at 918. So roughly when you're thinking about it, when you think about it, it would be 9 across from here and then up 18. And this is where you would actually build your fence on this hill to protect it from being hurt. The, the, um, the audience being hurt by the fireworks. All right, folks, that's the end of the video. Have a numerical day.